Hey everyone and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome back to the series where I talk about each of my watches in my watch collection. The previous video in this series discussed my the state of the collection as a whole so today I'm going to talk to you about some of the individual pieces or in effect one of the individual pieces and in subsequent videos we'll discuss the remaining pieces in my collection. First of all I'll do a quick um, watch check. So today I'm wearing the 116503 Rolex Daytona which is the bimetal, some people call it the two-tone, bimetal gold and steel with the black mother of pearl Tahitian dial. So today we're going to talk about the Breitling 806 1959 re-edition. Now this is a re-edition of the Navitimer, the Breitling Navitimer 806 that was originally issued in 1959. This particular version was issued in 1959. The actual 806 began its, its original production run in 1952. Um, there was different variations of the 806 that would progress during its its production run and the actual re-edition version um, is the version that was produced in 1959. Now the, the version that was produced in 1959 had certain characteristics different than the others. The depth of the case was slightly different and the amount of beads. Now the beads um, that provide the grip case, um, for example on the, on the calculator bezel on the Navi timer, there was a certain amount of beads that were issued on the 1959 version which are different to the other versions. In the 1959 issue there were 94 beads which is these little grip items, they're, they're like rice beads, hence why they're called beads, like rice beads around the circumference of the bezel. Now different versions produced different amounts of beads um, but the 1959 version as I said had 94. So it's very true to the to the 1959 edition. In effect, this is this is pretty much a duplication of the 1959 edition. Now, you're probably asking, okay, so why don't people buy the original 1959 edition? Surely that's worth more. Well, they do, of course. But the problem with the original version of the 1959, they were never built very well. Um, they were never very durable and, and you were very fortunate if they didn't actually fall apart in your hands. So a lot of people have bought the 806 re-edition so they're durable and they're very usable. Now the 1959 um, Navitimer has the calculation, what they call actually a circular slide rule, which is around the circumference of the, of the dial on the out extremities of the circumference of the dial. And which is, which is true to all, the form of all of all Navi timers. This slide rule was designed for, because the Navi timer was, was designed for pilots, so the slide rule was designed to provide pilots with the ability to do calculations such as airspeed and fuel consumption. I know nowadays that seems pretty crazy because you've got all sorts of electronic systems and automated systems on planes that enable that capability, but back in the day they didn't have that. So they enabled that capability on a, on a watch. Um, can you imagine actually doing fuel consumption readings using using the circular slide rule on, on an Abbey timer when you're thinking, okay, am I about to run out of fuel? <laughs> that's the last thing you want to be able to do. You, that's the last thing you want to be doing, um, you know, messing around with a, with a slide rule. But back in the day, I guess they used to do that. And this is what the, this is what the Navi timers were designed for. Now the 806 isn't the first Navi timer that was produced. The Navi timers were, um, were made, as I said earlier, um, from 1952 onwards. Um, but uh, the 806 came shortly after. And as I said, this is the 1959 version um, or the reissue of the 1959 edition. Now, being very true to form of the original 806, this has plexiglass on the front. Now, me personally, I would have preferred that they actually made a change from the original and actually had provided sapphire glass um, because you've got to be very careful because plexiglass can get marked. It's not impervious to being scratched. However, it is, it is flexible and it does allow a few more knocks, whereas 
sapphire glass may shatter if it had a hard knock as opposed to it'll never it will hardly ever scratch whereas plexiglass will scratch but it's um, more flexible and will take a bit more of a knock probably than than sapphire than the sapphire crystal but um, that's the only weakness and that prevents some people from actually wearing them on a regular basis but this is actually um, one of my um, regular watches although you'll see it's actually been in the safe for a while hence why it's not in the correct time um, because I'm wearing the Daytona at the moment but uh, this and the Daytona are, are the watches I'd say to get most wrist time um, compared to the rest of the collection also the eagle eyed among you will notice that it's not got the original 806 strap on there the 806 strap original strap and the 806 uh, re-edition straps are leather now the original 806 strap i believe had a bit more cushioning or less cushioning rather than the reissue 806 um, but this 806 did actually come with the with the strap with a leather strap um, which is how the 806 re-edition was issued um, I've changed that. I've kept the original strap to keep it in good condition and also because to be honest I'm not really into leather straps. I don't like leather straps. I prefer metal straps So I managed to procure a JB champion mesh strap, which is new old stock And what that means is is this uh, is an actual original JB champion strap from the era of the 1950s That was brand new and just held in stock and was, has never been worn and had never been used um, so I, I managed to procure it and have put it on the 806 and I think it looks really good um, as you can see there. Now this mesh strap wasn't an original item on the 806 in any way shape or form um, but because they never had a mesh strap or a metal strap on the 806 on the original 806 um, but it is actually from uh, the new old stock JB Champion is, is the mesh strap from the from the Breitling Cosmonaut so it's pretty close in, in era. So it's pretty pretty true to the actual era and pretty true to form. Hence why I think it suits the Navi Timer 806 very well. And I really like how it how it looks on the wrist. From 1952 to 1959, there were multiple versions of the 806 that were issued. Some of the watches were issued for the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, um, shortened to AOPA. Where you see below the Breitling lettering, there's a winged logo. In the middle part of that winged logo, those items that are issued through the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, they actually have AOPA, the acronym, actually in that box section in the middle in between the two wings. Now the 806 re-edition is a limited run. Therefore, there was only 1,959 of these related to the actual year. That's the re-edition of. Um, there's only 1,959 of these that were, that were made and that are in the edition, that are in, that are in existence. So you're very fortunate to be able to get hold of one. I was quite lucky to get one and actually managed to get a little bit of discount on this, which is quite surprising um, because maybe it's, it's because these are perceived to hold their value and to go up in value in the future as long as Breitling doesn't flood the market. As anybody who knows about watches will know that Breitling don't hold their values in general, but this is a such a short numbered run that hopefully they will hold their value. But it's such a beautiful watch. I didn't buy it for that. I bought it because I actually like the watch and love to wear it. This is actually um, numbered, my version is actually numbered 1159 of 1959. And I always thought that was quite pregnant because I was, in my earlier days, I was very much into the band Blondie. And on one of their albums, I think it was called Parallel Lines or Eat to the Beat, one of those two. And they had a song called 1159 on there, which is one of my favorites. So it was quite pertinent when I saw that uh, my version that my issue of the watch was actually numbered 1159 so that's quite cool really but with regards to the movement on this watch uh, this has the b09 brightling movement and it has a a vertical clutch now what that means is is that when you start the stopwatch which i'll just do there there's actually a column wheel chronograph as well so you, you can usually tell a column wheel chronograph by the directness as you can see there here there of the start and stop of the chronograph it's very direct and you can tell you can usually tell it's a vertical clutch in that when I start and stop the stopwatch the second hand doesn't jump as I mentioned earlier in my state of the collection video 
links below if you would like to see that video. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, please make sure that you click like, you smash that like button as they say. And please, if you're not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe so you get notifications of, of all future videos to come. So as I, as I was saying there, you can tell it's a vertical clutch in that the actual seconds hand, the chronograph seconds hand, when it starts and stops. When you start and stop it, it doesn't jump. With a vertical clutch, the actual mechanism is already running and in effect you are just letting the chronograph hand go when you press the actions on the column wheel to actually move the column wheel around to actually uh, enable the, the stopwatch to start. Um, when you have a horizontal clutch, gears are actually meshing which is why you get a nuance sometimes when you get the actual second hand will jump a slight bit because obviously when you're meshing gears, so you're moving a mechanism in and it's meshing gears, it may mesh there or it may mesh there. If it meshes before or after and obviously the seconds hand has already started is or, or is already has already been started and has been stopped and you're re-engaging then you'll get a slight nuance between the cogs and you'll get a little bit of a jatter sometimes not all not all the time but quite often and it's a, it's a way of telling whether or not a chronograph is vertical or horizontal clutched obviously you can tell from if you do your history you do, do your research about the particular movement anyway you'll be able to know um, whether it's a vertical or horizontal clutch. Now the movement in this, in the movement in the 806 is the B09. Um, the B09 movement, as mentioned earlier, has a 70 hour power reserve and it's a manual wind. Now the actual wind on it was very, very stiff to begin with, but it's actually quite smooth now. So it's quite a pleasure to actually use and quite a pleasure to wind. And uh, it's, it's such a beautiful dialed watch and very, very well designed. I don't have that many Breitlings in my watch collection. But um, and I but I always wanted to get a Navi timer, but I could never. But there was no Navi timers that are out there that were right for me. They just seemed too big and clumsy, and I didn't want one of those big dialed, big blue dialed Navi timers. This is this is around 40. I think it's 41.9, which is around pretty much 42 mil in size. Um, so you know this is just about right. Although obviously I've got some other watches that are bigger and I've got a fairly big wrist so I could take a bigger watch but I didn't want one of the bigger Breitlings and so when the 806 re-edition was released it was just right for me and of course it's beautiful dialed as well I thought well that's the perfect edition so um, I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to get hold of one. I don't think that I'll be procuring any more Breitlings not unless there's some special re-editions that come out which are, which are smaller of this similar um, footprint. So there you have my Breitling 806. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure that you subscribe. We've just gone over the 200 subscribers, so that's a great marker. Um, those 200 subscribers weren't easy to get. So if you can please subscribe, if you've not subscribed already, and obviously if you want to, if you want to perceive more content coming forward. So this channel may focus on supercars and I may move the watch content to another channel. So please let me know what you think below in the comments below. If you'd like to see the more watch content on this channel, if you'd like to see a different channel set up, which focuses totally on the watch content. Um, and if you'd like this channel to focus purely on the supercars. With respect to other bits and pieces that I'll be doing videos on, I've also got my first fitness video coming forward soon. Uh, it's already been recorded, it's just in edit at the moment. And it's gonna be very raw, and it's gonna be talking about how to build muscle um, in the proper way. And I've got a lot of experience in that, obviously, because I've trained and competed since I was very young. So it's another area that I'm, I'm going to create content on. And again, if you want to see, let me know when you watch that video, if you want to see any fitness content on this channel, or if you want to see that move to a different channel. But pretty, I'm pretty sure this channel will, will focus on supercars and it may stay with watches. But as I say, let me know below, just let me know your thoughts. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Please make sure you subscribe and hit that like button and select all so that you receive notifications of all future incoming videos. Loads more great, loads more good content to come. And thank you for watching and see you in the next video.